Good song. Um, I'd like to start by repeating Gordon's introduction and thanking you all for coming and being here today. Um, we really appreciate you coming to celebrate our wedding. It's, um, it's a really special day and it's made more special by you all being here. Um, I was going to list the, the four travellers, as you've done. I think we've already covered that. But again, the Aussies, the Irish, the Scottish, and those who've travelled from around Britain, thank you very much. It, it's, we're really grateful for you coming. Uh, I will, on my side of the family, has been off the best world travel, it seems, mention my cousin Gail, who set a new precedent at her school by writing a letter to her, her notoriously harsh headmaster to get the day off. <laughs> I, uh, I understand we are really, really close, <laughs> and we do everything together. Don't worry about it. And at this point, uh, post introduction to the speech, uh, I'd like to point out two things. I have, over the last week, been petrified of this, still am, um, and everyone who's come across me said, don't worry, don't worry, there's two things that have stuck out. One, it's not the Green's job to be funny. <laughs> Two, Emma will be on your side. <laughs> so just to reiterate, you told me, so I'm now telling you. <laughs> um, okay, let's get on with, uh, with my duties, and we'll start with the thank yous. Uh, first up, I'd like to thank Mike and Chris, the two ushers. Um, that's half a clap there. Eh? <laughs> uh, considering it was just two of you and you had numerous jobs to do, including clearing a pub, seeing 130 odd people, having a lot of service. Uh, I really appreciate all your hard work. Um, much, I say, much appreciated. You've done a great job. Thanks, lads. Yeah. Next, and it wasn't for a bomb, probably the stars of the show, our beautiful little flower girls. Elizabeth Madeline and Taylor. Um, you all look absolutely gorgeous today. Uh, more, most compliments, sorry, have come about you three. You're absolutely beautiful. And a special mention to all Elizabeth, my little goddaughter, for being a senior flower girl. You've done a great job. Thank you very much. Uh, bridesmaids, Angela, Karen, Karen, sorry, Hannah, Ali, and Kat. Uh, again, you all look absolutely stunning today. Um, really, 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 really. Uh, I'm sure everyone is really grateful, but I, I know everyone is really grateful that you all agreed to be a bridesmaids and uh, for all the support you've given it today and in the build up today. Uh, for my part, I'm really grateful that all five of you said yes. Uh, you played a really big part in our wedding budget. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, moving on again, uh, I come to my new in-laws, Gordon and Siobhan. Um, I have to be careful now after such a complimentary speech by Gordon. Uh, no, seriously, I, I can't thank the two of you enough for your help and uh, unbelievable generosity, uh, not only in preparing for the wedding, but just generally there for the meaning of Ondu. You, you've been absolutely brilliant. Um, since I've come in, got to know you as a family, the unwavering support for Avon is absolutely clear to see. And um, I'm, I'm very grateful that you extended that to me. Oh. I will point out the more specifics of your efforts, if I may. Avon and Gordon uh, are not unlike myself. Fitness fanatics. 
they, they enjoy a bit of a, a trip to the theatre uh, and some fine wine and dining. And they maybe noticed that I wasn't quite fit in that, that profile. <laughs> so to fit me in, they've ensured that all activities that they wanted me and want to attend have firstly been planned around the four matches. <laughs> I've excluded mushrooms and prawns from all food. <laughs> They've shortened their normally lengthy walks and that of their friends because I'm for once a better term blowing out to my backside. <laughs> <laughs> and they've generally just added beer to anything. We go for a walk, we go for a theatre, we go They've kind of spotted my weakness and they've got me on the board. So no, I, I really appreciate all your efforts. It's not going to notice. <laughs> um, Karen, Tudor, Taylor, and Zia, I, again, thank you for welcoming me into your family. Um, Taylor, maybe you're still a bit dubious, I think, but um, <laughs> generally, you've been great, and thank you very much. Um, before I move off, the in laws, I should just mention uh, that it was Gordon's birthday yesterday. Oh. 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 <laughs> Uh, normally, they're off to corners of the world, walking, cycling, generally awful holidays by some of them. Um, but they've had to change the plans and for, for this day to happen, so we appreciate that. And if we could, as a tradition, all sing happy birthday. Yes. So, uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> He's just said uh, ex favourite, some of them. <laughs> right, uh, moving on now to my family. Um, uh, my brother and sister, Adrian and Angela. Um, I'm very lucky to be very close to both, both of them. Um, the real doubt for me of the years, obviously, there's a bit of an age gap. You can tell, look at all you Mistake! <laughs> <laughs> That's another, that's another spin on it. Uh, Angela literally raised me from birth. Uh, it seems after the first two kids, I was done with being a mother. <laughs> and I had to sleep in the same room as Angela as a ten year old had to look after me. I feel I've set you a good step for your successful career that's followed. Adrian maybe wasn't as keen on me in my younger years. No. I was the, the little brat of a brother who wasn't pretty cool to have me hanging around with you and all your mates. Uh, but I'm glad to say that since I've grown up, able to go to a pub, have a beer again, we've grown really close. And, um, and he's really uh, greatly accepted to be best man. I really appreciated that. And he has done, generally speaking, a great job. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think a particular highlight for most people, not me, was how well he made my insecurities and picking out the outfit for my stag do. <laughs> people just kept laughing at me. They would talk to me, they just kept laughing. So, well, well done for that. Um, but anyway, I can't also miss out my lovely sister in law, Samantha, who is just another sister. Like Angela, she's equally as scary. Um, <laughs> I'm just from a place where it needs to be. Uh, no, again, seriously, I'm really lucky to have all of you. Um, you. It means the world to me. I love you all. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> Parents. Right, this could be all. Okay. Um, again, thank you very much for your generosity into making day. Today, a special day it has been. Um, as with Gordon Shavon, we would have been lost without you. Um, on a more personal note, I think I'm going to struggle with this, yeah. um, I owe the two of you everything. Um, you gave me a brilliant childhood and upbringing, and I've never faltered in the love and support you've given me. Um, but you still play uh, such a major part in our lives, uh, and the relationship mentioned with Adrian and Angela Sam, it's a testament to the commitment you've both shown 
to our family and continue to do so. Um, I love you both really, and I'm just blessed to have you. <laughs> right, come on. He's obviously forgotten the beat. Ready? <laughs> My beautiful new life. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to leave that album until I have to say it. There it is. Uh, me and Avon met in March 2005. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is he proud? <laughs> And <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, I was six months into my first year at uni and I come back for Easter holidays. Uh, allowing myself a break from studies, I decided to meet up with some friends for a rare trip over to Liverpool. Avon was also out of my friends and, few, and through some mutual acquaintances we'd ended up in the same bar. I had spotted a bar over inside the bar and despite the steamy conditions of downstairs slaters and the result of dripping of hair wax into your eyes, I'm sure that's can familiarise with. I was certain that she was quite a striking young woman. <laughs> At this point, uh, I should admit to being slightly naive, drawing on my own experience from being at school, I not realised that a 17-year-old on the final stretch of sixth form could or even want to go into the pool, and I therefore assumed like me she was just a fresher out home. Misled by this belief, I thought I was going to, I was going to, um, I'm sorry, I lost this one. <laughs> I initially decided that I'd make an effort to introduce myself. However, my progress was instantly halted as a bomb and a friend moved to the next bar, and having been released from her spell, I realised my friends had also already left. <laughs> so, lost and confused in this unknown environment in Liverpool, I headed out and thinking I'd probably have enough drink for the night and it was probably a sensible time to head home. And so I headed for the taxi. But unfortunately on my way I heard not unlike a siren, a song, which I don't know if you'll be aware of, by the Saw Doctors, Avon. Which basically spells out the name Avon. <laughs> I couldn't help but be tempted over, especially seeing as our friend Kerry was one of the people singing it alongside the mystery girl from the previous bar. So I approached and asked Kerry what was this all about and she told me of her misguided love of the sword doctors and that the mystery university student was indeed called Avon. So your name's Avon? I said. She said, yes. <laughs> and carried on singing. Conscious not to let the efforts of my first line I thought, right, I've got to follow up on this. And went into the bar, walked up to one of my friends and said, So, who's your friend? <laughs> said it's a bomb. <laughs> now, having really got confirmation from four different sources that the girl's name is a bomb, <laughs> I was trying to wonder how I'd take it to the next step. Fortunately, I didn't have to. A bomb approached me, and uh, it turns out my smooth talking wasn't too shabby after all. <laughs> It was nothing to do with the alcohol, and nothing to do with Carrie putting in a good word for me. It was all the student talk. Anyway, that was the start of our journey, and over the following couple of months, despite me being in Sheffield, uh, I found myself constantly being drawn back to Avon, back on the Wirral. Um, and I'm not saying it was the only reason, but there is a definite correlation between the growth of our relationship and Liverpool's progress through the 2005 Champions League Finals. <laughs> <laughs> it was particularly highlighted uh, when seconds before Stephen Gerrard scored the VAT goal against Olympiacos, <laughs> one happened to text me, just, how's things, you know? <laughs> uh, being, the midst of being a little bit suspicious when it comes to football, because Liverpool generally haven't been great in my time, I thought I've got to hold on to this girl, she's, she's got something about it, <laughs> admittedly for the wrong reasons. So the, we carried on talking and not on the 25th of May as Liverpool's heroic team fought back from 3-0 down to snatch such an unlikely victory and one also caught a lucky break. Yes! And I decided to ignore my previous worries and give it a go. <laughs> In the following years uh, we had to travel as Gordon's already mentioned between Sheffield, Exeter, London, Exeter, Sheffield, Santander, etc, etc. But we kept going um, 
grew strong because of it and eventually at the end of the uni we came home and we got to live in the same postcode and then 18 months ago we got to live in the same house. Uh, I can honestly say I've not been happier in, in, since the intervening period um, and I grew to realise there was no doubt that despite the origins uh, I'd found the girl for me. Hoping she felt the same way, I went out, bought a ring, and proposed last August, and so here we are today. Avon, you look absolutely stunning today. Uh, I always knew you would, but nonetheless, I've been blown away. Um, I still can't quite believe this beautiful bride is mine. Now, I'm not one with the greatest vocabulary, so like many similar grooms, you often turn to some great piece of literature or famous songs to describe the feelings to their new wife. Fortunately, in the weeks building up to the wedding, I've heard a, a song over and over, um, which has been quite apt and fits the bill when I'm trying to talk about you. Unfortunately, it's a crap song. <laughs> so, I apologise to you and everyone else for quoting the James Arthur lyrics. <laughs> you're, nobody to, you're nobody to nobody, loves you? No, somebody. Yeah, well done. You think she's a nobody now? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> you might have uh, anyway, I, I, I often uh, jokingly refer to a bond as a uh, swinging brick. Because <laughs> outwardly she doesn't really show much signs of emotion. The, the romantic proposal is just like, yeah, right. <laughs> Everyone else in tears around me. <laughs> um, but the greatest thing Avon does between the two of us is she makes me feel so loved. Um, you know, through everything we do, um, no matter what happens, I realise that I've got you at home and no one else can love me like you can, and I really appreciate that. So to you, Avon, I, I love you with all my heart. I promise to you and to all your families, family and friends that I'll do my very best and give my all to ensure that you feel as loved as I do by you. Because there is no greater feeling. So we'd be very glad to know uh, that all we need to me to do is propose a toast. Um, it's tradition for the, the groom to toast to the bridesmaids, but I'd like to extend it to a bond today. So if you could all stand. To a bond and the bridesmaids. To a bond and the bridesmaids.